Greetings, Marcher, and welcome to episode 388 of my Modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to buff up titanium circuits and our fuel burners in order to smooth out gold science production. Enjoy. Well, it's looking like all of our upgrades have finally got us a full belt of gold science. It may take a while to see the spurting that happens when everything has been fully seeded, but for now, all the belts, at least of the resources that we are using, are being sent in, so we've got a bit of a buffer to fill here. It runs smoothly for the most part, but it does run into the issue that making tungsten shares resources with titanium. So one thing I did here is that we weren't using any of these high-tier titanium methods, so I mixed in the one that uses aluminum and tin. So instead of half of the recipe being titanium, only a third of it is. And this is running here. Looks like this one's also kind of pulsing a little bit. Could just be a flow rate thing. So let's see if we can fix it with a pump here. Could be the output of this. Oh yeah, it's just way too high. That's kind of funny. But it's certainly fixable with a patch here. Here we go. We've got full priority for that side. So if you look at titanium here, it uses the crystals of rubite, crotinium, sapphirite, and if we go to the tungsten, it's steratite, jivalite, and also sapphirite. So two of these are not connected, and the problem is, is we're only making so much sapphirite that we do have a setup here to make one belt of tier one, one belt of tier two, and one belt of tier three. However, that doesn't apply to our little tier four patch here which must use the tier three crystals. Now we could upgrade all of these setups here by adding better machines and better modules, but the problem there is it'll start taxing all of this stuff and there's a lot of interconnected things that I'd rather not deal with right now. So the other way around this is to just spread the load around to allow us to have more available for tungsten because ultimately tungsten is the big one. However, looking at the other resources that go into this, we definitely need a lot of copper, but titanium is the other big one. Copper, there's nothing we can really do about because it's not an alloy. It just goes straight into making coils. So it seems like adding that extra recipe in there for the titanium has helped out a bit. And hopefully gold is still a full belt. It is. And if, for a second there I thought it was pulsing, but no, it's the FPS that's pulsing. So <laughs> it's still going. However, I did notice another issue, and in fact you basically see it in play here. We have no more green circuits. So green circuits is another thing that we are falling behind on. It's the next limiting factor, and when you look at all of our science, we need to scroll down here to the green circuits, and we determine we need 71.7 .7 of total green circuits, and that makes sense that if we have not upgraded it yet, it's probably only doing about 30. So we have an empty belt, and that's the next limiting factor here. So let's hop over to green circuits, and well, it's not running, so... <laughs> that's an issue. It doesn't have the integrated electronics, and they... don't have the insulated wire, so are we out of rubber? Yeah, seems like it. It's requesting... rubber, and it's not getting any. And rubber is being made... as a part of this monstrosity here. And it is basically running, so how come... it's not making any of our rubber. Of course, now that I'm looking at it, it's running. But it looks like the residual gas is getting maxed out. Well, the ultimate dump of all of that is to go into naphtha. And if we fill up this naphtha tank, then all the other methods that are creating gases will stop. And then the clog will go away. So, what this means is we need to set this higher than 10,000. We have a pump in here already, and a couple of them, because it was patched after the fact, to get it up to... 20,000, but how about we increase this where we want this to get it up to about 40,000 and This one will be below 50. So in other words a 100% of the tank And that thing's certainly going as fast as it can nap is very quickly filling up, but how about this is actually set to Maybe that low point of 10,000 Just to see what happens. We certainly have a huge amount of oil residuals in there and we want to get rid of this residual gas. So, let's put a top-up valve in here to give priority for this other residual gas first. And it could just be right now, we're only doing the blue science, which doesn't require 
Much of the naphtha? It does require some, but the purple science is where most of it goes, and since that's not running... No rubber. This is our factory's one source of rubber. We just never really need much of it. So, we're gonna have to supercharge this a bit if we want to be able to make a lot of it in a short period of time. We could always make rubber the natural way with trees, if we need to here, but that's about to be 600, so... It's sending the drone. So, in a few moments, that'll get fired up again, and I see that power consumption is down to 18 gigawatts. Is that because everything is essentially stopping? Yep, pretty much. And here comes the rubber. And it's going back for another one. Probably just had a huge buffer of rubber because it's just not used very quickly. I guess we'll let this provider chest fill up again. It does put a bit of rubber into a buffer, but... The drone's coming back with more, so it's probably fine. Alright, well, we'll let that run. So now, the question is... Are we making what we need? And unfortunately, we are not. And also, unfortunately, there's not enough space here to make this any bigger. And we basically need this entire green belt of output. So, from past experience, if we replace two of these productivity modules with speed modules, That'll make it significantly faster while still having two-thirds of its original productivity. The uh, electrical network is kind of stumbling on itself where we're only putting out six gigawatts right now and the accumulators are completely full. But we're still running the plutonium because we need the curium and the deuterium power sources are slowly shutting down and it uh, looks like we finally got a red signal so something is overheated. And yeah, it's deuterium. But what can you do after consuming about 50 gigawatts and then suddenly not consuming 50 gigawatts anymore? Puts a big strain on it. Okay, with those upgrades. <laughs> well, we're definitely getting it. If our goal was this many green circuits, these are what the input numbers would be, which means we would need to have one belt of each major item except two of transistors, which could it be done? Probably but I just don't want to, and we would be losing productivity by doing that. So in this case, it seems to make sense to just make a new setup somewhere else. And we've got a lot to take out of this. Of course, there's always stuff in the way, but it would go somewhere in here. So it's time to remove even more stuff. I don't think the robots will care too much. Oh, it's so leggy. How about, uh, like right here? We do need a tiny bit more landfill. Wow, 75% of our fuel burner setup is going? Really? Wow, I guess it was. No wonder we have uh, so much accumulator charge right now. Okay, I think we've got most of this hooked up, but I suppose we will see in a moment here. And unfortunately, don't have yellow belts on me, so... We're just going to have to wait for them to be delivered. Well, power usage is back up to 41 gigawatts, so I suppose we're getting some amount of green circuits again onto the bus. But, of course, we need more. And silicon nitride makes sense because we're just not making very much of it for the main bus. And that's probably where it's asking to go. Intermediates, yeah, basically. It's low priority stuff right now, so we can just let it take its time. It's going to take a second for these to update, but they are. We don't need to worry about balance too much. Because it worked before, so it should work again. More yellow belts. suppose I should just hook them all up now. Alright, here we go. Might as well hook the rubber up. Don't really need to have these machines here. Let's let everything fill up. There we go. So once we deliver the green boards, and luckily we do have red belts in our inventory, this should all fire up. Sure seems like it. So now we need to merge the belts together. One green belt should be barely enough for what we need. We could always run a second one if we need it, but the one should do. And there we go. That's more than a green belt, but for now, that will get us what we need. And delivering to a train already, which is great. I suppose we should go through and upgrade these legacy choppers to use best machines and best modules. But for now, let's ride the train back. 
Luckily, there's not too many of those choppers left. And the train gets unloaded very quickly. We do still have some steel choppers here, but that's basically there just for the military science, which I don't even think we really need anymore, but since I'd rather not rebuild it if we don't have to, uh, let's just leave it. Definitely have some unused warehouses in here now, which is fine. The slot is open for when we do want to use them. That said though, it looks like we made a request for gold twice. <laughs> There's one down here that's going to nowhere. And then one up here that is going somewhere. But let's get rid of that gold request. And let's use an actor provider to get rid of all of that. Will it come back up here? It looks like it. We do have a buffer chest, but only so much will fit in here. But we'll let it run and see what happens. Let's see, other buses. Definitely our main bus has some choppers. Not many. So, how are we doing here? Well, starting to barely back up on green circuits. But we are. So given enough time, all of this gold science should stabilize again. And then we'll see what the next issue is. Uh-oh, stuff's actually getting destroyed. But that's, uh... <laughs> oh my goodness, the lag. Because of all of the explosions and all of the biters and... <laughs> wow, that's pretty bad. But, uh... It should clear out in a second. I hope. <laughs> Definitely we're getting to the point where every single major thing that we do is starting to cause lag. So doing things like picking up thousands of fighter orbs is going to uh, cause a little bit of slowdown. And it looks like our gold science is falling behind again. Sometimes the belt is fully compressed like this, but it's never really been spurting like we would expect. Which means that even though the belt fills itself up sometimes, it also falls behind, but in this situation is falling super duper behind. But I think it comes down to titanium here, and that when titanium runs, it completely removes our sapphire. And you can definitely see that there's a lot of these methods that aren't getting any sapphire at all. No jivalite there. So the triage system is working, where resources are being held out if they are unavailable. So we probably could just fix this by upgrading all of this to be faster but I don't really want to do that right now. I would prefer to try to fix it with higher technology before we just hit it with the big stick and make it all faster through scale. And well, here's a problem. <laughs> uh, Saffrite is out on the train, so that could very well be the issue. Uh, it's here, but you see the train is waiting that normally these warehouses should be full with an entire train of resources, and then it just stays here for a little bit and gets loaded, so... This might actually be the cause of that slowdown, it's just the train wasn't there. And uh, that could be just a belt thing here, because I see no reason why this all couldn't go faster. This mine is actually starting to run out now. We have fully scanned it for resources, so when it runs out, it runs out. We have been making the alien orbs and making great progress on rocket parts. We only need five more protection fields, and then that will be everything for the spaceship with the exception of the FTL drive which is the last thing we need to do here and we're 65% through the second to last research after this it's just the big one it has taken a decent amount of time to find errors and fix them I haven't necessarily been showing everything on screen but I also feel like it would just kind of be a grind where you know I find oh this could use faster belts or I should put speed modules in here that kind of thing I try to save stuff to actually put in the episode that's a little more interesting, like uh, upgrading a mining outpost here. <laughs> if I showed everything, it would be many, many episodes of not much really happening, so I would prefer to keep things interesting and moving along. I have upgraded my uh, character a little bit. Even more laser defense for fighting biters. And I took some of the fusion reactors out because we just don't seem to need them. And lots and lots of personal RoboPorts, so now we can have up to 480 robots, which we are hanging on to here because we have plenty of space for them. Well, this isn't fully populating the belt here, but that's because they're all on one side. 
So how about we give everyone their own belt? There we go. Yoink. I can live dangerously now. I guess we can see uh, the drive through what used to be ocean, but now a farm of accumulators. So that certainly would have caused a delay of resources here. So basically all of our forms of sapphire were completely used up. Nonetheless, I do believe there is still some fighting that happens when it comes to titanium and tungsten running at the same time. However, we have left some performance on the table here. Clearly it being purple machines, it wasn't upgraded all that long ago. But we are only doing tier 2 of titanium, which increases yield from 100 to 150 percent. So if we upgraded it again, we'd get it to 200 percent, and that would certainly help. The process of making the ingots comes from pellets, which is carbon and calcium chloride. Those are things we know how to make now. And then of course, the pellets come from processed titanium. This does save us the sponge stage, which also saves us the titanium tetrachloride stage. So it actually looks like the tier three of titanium is simpler, and that is a good thing. So let's come down and make some. Currently our factory is based around 60 items a second of input, so that means we need 120 of the output. And interestingly, this does create limestone. But the input is the pellets, the processed titanium, and then we're down to regular. It does require quite a bit of carbon, but I'm sure we could keep that up. And this limestone certainly goes into things. In fact, we need a huge amount of it to make all of our iron, which we're constantly making. So as long as we threw this into a balancing warehouse, which probably could be right here, it would all get used up. And then we need the calcium chloride, which we are going to need in very large quantities. We are already delivering it to our cobalt here. And since both of them probably won't run at the same time all of the time, I'm guessing we could probably just use this belt, maybe upgrade it to green, because I don't want to have to run two of them. But it is running now, but not too fast. We'll see. I guess it wouldn't be that bad to just place a second one. And a little bit of hydrogen chloride, but that's nothing crazy. So now we're down to our base resources that would be delivered here. So let's see what we can do with the build. First, let's just throw speed modules into everything, make sure they're all the highest tier machine. They seem to be. And what do we have here? Well, that seems to be two into two into two and one at the bottom. So pretty good. So let's uh, back these out a little bit to try to clean them up. And we have this one, but why not just make it two like the rest of them? because then that does let us clean up the machine a little bit and also just lots of room for direct insertion. Okay, we've got something to work on here. And actually, before we start, if you'll notice on power, we have over 100 of the Muon Fusion Catalyst now. I stopped production around having maybe 10 of them. However, now that we have enough reactors to consume all of our factory's deuterium gas, that as those catalysts can no longer be fueled up, we're starting to collect them. So we had a huge buffer inside of the fuel cells because each fuel cell holds a catalyst that uh, as we start to run out everything will power down and we have 10 reactor groups right now and our factory can only support seven of them consistently so the others are there to absorb buffer when the factory slows down and you can see that it is definitely pulsing it's not always on because each one of these turns on with an extra five gigawatts of power consumption and the final one only turns on at 50 and we did just hit 50, so we're at full power of deuterium again. But that's how that works. So eventually we're going to run out of fuel cells in here and probably have a lot of uh, fusion catalysts just sitting around. And at that point, we'll just be running based on how much deuterium we have. And then from there, we'll figure out if we want to build any more. I did notice in one of the recent updates that it looks like they fixed these plasma bullets to actually use the correct gas again. Either that or it was a problem with uh, my mods, but uh, it's good now. So we are actively making plasma ammo. And that is definitely the best ammo to use in that it has essentially explosions all of the time. And when you're running with swarm again, that really helps <laughs> to get rid of the swarms. Okay, well, we don't have much room to build stuff anymore here, but I think last time we did it down here next to gold science, 
which as you can see is starting to smooth out again. It's just the problem with gold science is it's right on the line of what we can effectively do. So if there's the smallest hiccup, it falls behind. So what we're trying to do here is to get rid of these hiccups just enough so gold science can run 100% of the time because every time it slows down like this, it just makes this take longer that each one of these researches, this one and then the other one, are going to take about eight hours assuming gold science can run at full power. So I've probably been messing with this for at least a few hours now because we're at 67%, but we want it to be completely smooth if possible. And it, it takes a very long time for it to recover, but we have a pretty simple build. Let's just build one of them and then we can put the other one in there where we have the ore processor, direct inserted into the pellet machine, direct inserted into a blast furnace. And man, this is going to be very small. We can have the calcium chloride machine out here. And it technically only needs a purple belt, but let's just do a green one. It's amazing how compact this is. I guess titanium was the one resource that actually gets simpler when you upgrade it. So it'll have one belt of input. And in fact, let's do this space it out by one because then we can have each of these on those sides it'll be something like that but uh, we do have limestone as an output too technically this will all fit on this one belt but for now let's blacklist the limestone so only the output we want comes through here now we can switch that to whitelist and that will be the limestone which will go to where it needs to go so I think that's it. It's surprisingly simple. So let's just pull all of this away. And all those sponges probably won't be able to go anywhere because we're not going to be using them anymore. But let's try to place this in such a way and... Actually, since this thing runs on carbon already, let's switch that to carbon take one thing out of the list and also we want to try to get this to be symmetrical to everything else so it would be like this but we'll space it out by one that'll let us put the carbon straight down the middle so while we're here I guess we can just send the carbon in there also the hydrogen chloride the limestone would come in here we need to make sure we have an empty belt Just keep going over everything. And all of that limestone will just go in, ensuring that we use the byproducts. So now we need crushed stone, and conveniently, it is right here. It is running a lot, though, which means we probably do want to have two belts of it. It's coming from such a long way away, though. And I don't know. <laughs> So far away, I am really hesitant to put another one in there. Gonna have to just throw away all that titanium sponge. It's probably not worth trying to save. And by throwing that in there, we are making a little bit of stuff. Come on, stone, where are you? There it is. Let's let this run for a while and fill up all of the buffers. Mm. Kind of worried that this one alone is going to require 60 of the crushed stone and cobalt does run for stuff in fact it runs for a lot of stuff because we need a huge amount of cobalt steel for our gold science so unfortunately i think there's no way around having to put a second belt in here it's just too much stone and it's coming from too far away luckily we do have one more slot here on our sorting warehouse for stone All right, all connected. Now we just have to wait for it to get down here. We'll leave the stone buffers in place here. It should help a little bit, plus it's just crushed stone, which in itself is pretty low priority, and we can afford to have it in buffers. Might want to have a buffer tank right here, because it's quite a bit of acid, and it's coming from quite far away. And how about we just upgrade this one to green there? Oh, making the titanium request and just about in time because we're about to fire this up. So let's see it work. 
and it's not going to be a full green belt. The limiting factor in this build is both the ore processors and the blast furnaces, but neither of them are completely maxed out, so I suppose we can really test it by making sure that these two red belts are being fully utilized, and if they are, then we are using the full input, and it looks like we are because these ingots are now pulsing. So those look good. That should save a little bit more sapphorite, and it looks like Sapphorite still hasn't quite caught up because that isn't running yet. And it is still being triaged. Which one exactly is doing the pulsing? It's just the generic sorting method here. Not pulsing very often, but it's also a low priority one, so when it gets filled up, it will stop. So hopefully, that will fix it. And uh, like usual, it takes, I feel like hours, <laughs> definitely uh, minutes. It takes quite a long time for gold science to catch back up and in part that's because a lot of these builds are very close to the minimum number of machines. The big one is these titanium bearings at 11.59 and we have exactly 12 across our four builds so when you look at that margin above the minimum that whenever there's a slowdown it actually takes a long time for it to max out and then I added some speed modules in here to try to make that less of an issue where the next limiting factor is our cobalt steel here, because there's only so many of these machines. And they do fill a bit of a buffer, so it might react a little faster. Well, it looks like we're not getting a full supply of our titanium anymore. And that's because no hydrofluoric acid. So, following it down to its source, well, it is indeed empty. And that's because no fluorite. And that is because it got triaged. Specifically because we are completely out of... The tier 2 here and that is because no lubricant so following the chain all the way back to its source right here that we are not making any new oil because we are overloaded on nutrient pulp and nutrient pulp does have a dump into these machines here to turn it into fuel oil and the fuel oil is maxed out and it is being pumped away however it's not being consumed so following it all the way back here that when we have too much, it is sent to make fuel blocks, and we don't have any residual gas. And follow it back further, <laughs> this has been a long chain, we don't have any residual gas, because we are actually maxed out on plastic, believe it or not. And I think this is an issue, because our big science setup, the main plastic consumer, is purple science. And since it isn't running technically, because it's not needed for this, that we are finding ourselves overloaded on plastic products. So the next best thing here is probably just to consume the propane. Now propane is very dirty, and we had a bunch of propane burners, which I got rid of. In this situation, I think we need a few of them again. And how many are we going to need? <sighs> That's difficult to calculate. How about let's just calculate what these would have consumed. It's 1320, so let's calculate for 1320. First we need to consume with a burner heat source with an input. There we go. Propane. And how many are we going to have together? Well we could actually have an unlimited amount of them because they're fluid burning heat sources and they don't need resources inserted into them. For now let's just do an 8. So 1320. Oh that's so much. So this is actually going to be pretty big. Essentially 10 groups. Well, we might be able to save ourselves some work here because this giant solids burner rarely runs and it's only at 9% power right now. What if we just convert one of them from running on belts to running on fluids? So to do that, first we'll just unhook this here so everything goes into the first setup. And we should be able to just kind of replace everything. This is going to create a lot of pollution, but there's really no other way around it. The reason why we have that propane is because plastic is now a byproduct on that particular part of the factory, but we're actually running it for other reasons. For example, because we are overloaded on fuel oil. And we could burn the fuel oil, but it's kind of a waste, considering we can turn them into much cleaner fuel blocks instead. And our factory is constantly consuming a lot of power, so doing this sounds pretty smart. So now the other question is, do we leave all these belts in place, or do we tear it apart? Because we are going to need to have room for the fuel pipe in here somewhere. To convert it over, removing the least amount of things, 
could probably just pull this center belt out of here. Man, there's a lot of it. Let's add to this deconstruction planner here, where we don't want yellow belts, yellow splitters, yellow inserters. So I believe if we do that, should pull out most of the bad stuff. Looks like there's also a purple belt in there as well. There we go. Because we have so many robots now, the factory bots are not coming to help us because we get all the work done immediately. So now that that's done, just remove those so that construction planner stays the way it's supposed to. The logic for how this hooks up is essentially the same. We could make it different, but all of these wires currently reach, and I'd rather not go through this changing that. So instead, how about we switch these from the enriched fuel blocks to propene. So instead of reporting the solids burner, they're going to report burning liquids instead. And all they're doing is just checking the temperature of this one heat source. It's not the most ideal way of doing things, but it's good enough for our purposes. We cut out half of the power plant, so we'll drop this down to 16. And we also need a second one. And we'll hook it up the same way. This time checking for the propene. Hook it up there. So it will show up as a percentage of power output. Looks like the butane gas is still in here. So if instead we switch this to propene, it should be properly filtered. So it looks like the propene signal is being added to a signal transmitter somewhere. <laughs> That's not good. It really shouldn't be. I can't really understand why it would. Finding the origin of a signal sounds <laughs> rather annoying. Well, let's see here. Let's search for entity and search for a signal transmitter because <laughs> it's one of these that's getting the signal. Oh, is it that one? Yes. Okay. That was less hard than I thought it would be. It's reporting this right here, but it really doesn't need to. That propene is just going by to the chlorine setup, and this is just a buffer tank. I don't think we really need this, so we'll remove it. The only thing it potentially could have been connected to is down here to force this to run. I don't see any places where it would have been hooked up, because a lot of this logic has changed over the various episodes. So how about for now, we'll just unhook it and see, because it doesn't seem like it's doing anything. And normally we're going to be kind of maxed out on propene anyway. Okay, so when this runs, it should run correctly, and all these are connected already, but it would look more symmetrical if we did something like this. This is a lot of gas though, so it's going to be on the upper limit of what we can actually transport through here. Here, let's just put that in there because it fits. It'll be nice seeing the numbers be higher for the solid fuel plant now that it's not so hilariously oversized. And then we need to get the propene in here. And I think even the trains prioritize this plastic over the other one. I don't specifically have logic for that, but that seems to be what they normally do. But anyway, now this tank is up to 80% and it is pulsing the propene gas through the pipes. So if we come back to our power plant, we are now seeing propene gas, and man, it is filling up fast. I guess it's time to hook it up then. You can see what happens. All these should start running, creating propene signals. However, technically, although this plant is burning fuel, it's not actually hooked up to the network right now because our accumulators are charged, so not going to see much happen yet. That's probably just because everything has slowed down. Yeah, it's completely stopped because no tungsten. But in doing those changes, we are now making the fluoride again. It's just there was a lot of backup here on lubricant, but they are going. I feel like we could uh, get more out of this with some speed modules. And we are going to be loaded on propene very quickly because these are already very hot. Let's see here. Can we get more out of this? Well, certainly these are faster. Might consume all of our lubricant rather quickly by doing this. We're also quite low on it, so. There's a lot of machines that are sucking it all up right now. And propane gas is maxed out again. But the accumulator charge is now low enough to where a lot of these are turning on. And this propane gas is empty. That power plant is now working. 
and this tank is not completely full, so it is properly sending its resources away. And residual gas is building up too. And lubricant is trying to build up. Anyway, just changing the machines on here. Has more or less maxed this out, but let's put some faster belts in here. And some of this stuff isn't running at all. Looks like some of these need to have filters that they're just not applied. Like the filter inserter was there, but it just didn't get the filter. Anyway, without changing too much about it, that seems to have fixed it. So we should be getting the maximum output of our fluorite. And we are. Probably making an immense amount of pollution with this propane. Not that you can really tell the difference, though. <laughs> but once again, the tungsten is now at maximum output. And hydrofluoric acid is readily available. Just takes a very long time for the resources to make their way back here. And we've done probably everything we can. At least for now. And after running brightly for a couple of moments, now the propene is running much slower. And that's fine. If we have other resources to burn, we could actually throw them in here. And that's the end of this episode. On the next one, we are going to fight some biters, as well as upgrade our copper production and increase the factory's UPS. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.